In today's experiment, we're comparing growing hydroponically versus soil in the crack key setup. So stay tuned for the video. A few days ago on our YouTube channel, we received a comment where somebody was asking if you can use the crack key tray setup for growing with soil. Now, over these last few days, it really had me thinking that we should do an experiment on just that. So here in front of me, I have two of our crack key trays and we're gonna get them set up with two different medium types. So let's go ahead and get the mediums into these trays. First thing we need to do is remove our top lid. We don't need this right now, so let's set it aside. Now let's put our medium in both of the mesh trays. First is our hydroponic grow mat, which is our silicone reusable grow medium. This medium is completely inert, meaning there are no nutrients found within it. Now for our other tray, we're gonna fill it up with six cups of the soil. Now we need to go through and break apart all these clumps and get it evened out in our tray. Something I am noticing about the soil, because we are using a mesh tray, some of that soil is falling into my bottom tray, but we'll worry about that later in the grow. Now let's go ahead and mist both of these mediums to prep them for seed. And for our seed of choice, we're gonna be using this Mammoth Red Rock Cabbage Seed from True Leaf Market. So we'll be using 25 grams per tray. Something I do really love about the reusable grow mediums is how well I can see my seeds whenever I'm seeding the trays. As for soil, whenever I'm seeding the tray, it's a bit harder to see, but you just can't beat that nostalgic smell of soil. Now let's water our seed. Time to trap in that humidity. And since we're using the crack key tray setup, we're gonna go with just a empty tray as our weight on top, and we will not be adding any additional weight to this. All we have left to do now is get these on the shelf behind me where they can continue to germinate. From this point forward, I will be coming out a second time and missing them both later today. And over these next few days, I will keep y'all updated on how the growth is on both trays. It is the morning of day three for both of these trays, and they have been germinating for two full days. I wanted to go ahead and take a quick glance at them and show you where they're at in both of their growth. Taking a look at both our soil and our silicone group, these are looking beautiful this morning. We're beginning to see germination across the entire tray and some of them actually have some of the little sprouts starting to come out. That, and you may notice there's a bunch of little fuzzies across each one. Now don't confuse that with mold because it's not mold. That's actually part of the plant and it's called a root hair. And what those root hairs are telling me right now is, hey, I am ready for some water. Before we miss them, let's go ahead and take a look at our roots. So far on the soil tray, I'm really not seeing too many roots at all yet, except for right here, we're beginning to see a few popping through. On the silicone side, we are seeing a lot more of those roots coming through. I'll see y'all soon for another update. It is the morning of day four for both of our trays, and today we're gonna to take a look at these and see if they're ready for the next step. Taking a look at both our soil and our hydroponic group, I am extremely happy with how these are both looking. We have wonderful germination across both of them, and I definitely believe that they're ready for the next step, which is blackout. Before we get into blackout, let's take a look at our roots. On our soil tray today, we are seeing a lot more of those roots popping through the bottom. And same with our silicone. What also makes me really happy to see about both of these trays is not only is our canopy looking really good, but our root structures are looking beautiful. Let's go ahead and get both tray roots misted with their water and put them into blackout for the day. There are quite a few roots coming through the bottom. I'm gonna miss a little bit of water in here for humidity. That way we really encourage these roots to stay nice and healthy.
Now we're gonna take the trays that were like this and reverse them into a dome. Back on the shelf, these will go. And later today, I'm gonna to come back out and give them another misting. I'll see y'all tomorrow for another update. It is the morning of day five for both of these trays and they have been in germination for four full days. This has consisted of three days under weight and 24 hours of blackout. Now it's time to remove these from blackout and place them into light and get them bottom watered for the very first time. But before we do that, let's take a look at both of our groups. At first glance of our soil and hydroponic group, they both look beautiful. We have wonderful germination across each tray and I really love the height and coloration of this crop right now. Another thing I wanna look at too is the root structures. On our soil tray, the roots look extremely healthy and we are definitely long enough to reach bottom water. Now we can fill both of these up with some water. But before we do that, I'm gonna clean them out real quick. I've now rinsed these out to make sure there's no stagnant water or any of that leftover soil in the bottom of this tray. I also took that as an opportunity to check both of these two inch trays to make sure that there are no holes within the trays. That way, whenever I fill these up with their bottom water, I don't risk having them leak and get water everywhere. We're now gonna fill both of these trays up with 14 cups of water each. For our soil tray, we're gonna be using pH balanced water. And for our hydroponic side, I will be using a fertilizer. My fertilizer water mixture will contain Ocean Solution 203. And just like with our regular water side, it's been pH balanced to the 5.5, 6.0 range. The reason why our soil tray is not getting any additional fertilizers is because the soil already contains enough nutrients as is. However, with our hydroponic side, this medium is an inert medium, so there are no nutrients found within it. By adding additional fertilizers to my water, I give it more of a chance to keep up with our soil. Plus, I think this will be a fun comparison. Both reservoirs are now filled. What I need to do now is place the microgreen trays both on top. Now, something you may be noticing on both trays is that we're leaving about a one to two inch gap right here between the top of the tray and where the water level is. The reason for this is you do not want either one of these mediums actually sitting in the water. Instead, only the roots should be sitting in the water and that way they can wick the water up through capillary action. By also leaving that amount of space, you're giving them aeration so that way those roots can breathe. If I were to fill these trays all the way up with that water, not only would I be flooding my mediums, but I'd also be suffocating my roots. Now that both of these have been watered, I need to get these trays onto my shelf and underneath my lights of choice. For my lights of choice, I will be using some Blurple LEDs. And over these next few days, we're just gonna check on these, see how their root structures are doing, as well as their overall growth. And I really wanna see how saturated, if any, the medium gets. Because typically whenever I'm growing using the crack key setup, I am growing hydroponically using reusable grow mediums. And with these reusable grow mediums, they don't retain water in the same way that soil or cocoa core does. So usually I don't have to worry about that water wicking up too much and attaching to the medium. Instead, I pay more attention to if I'm flooding the medium. So this does present a whole bunch of new challenges that I've never experienced when using the crack key system by using soil in this type of setup. And that's one of the things I'm really excited about with this experiment, to see how soil performs using the crack key method. And if there's any fine tuning we could do to make this grow even better. Anyways, y'all, I'm getting a little too ahead of myself because I'm very excited about this. I'll see y'all here in a few days for another update. It is the morning of day seven for both of our trays here, and both of the growth on these is looking beautiful. Something I have been noticing about the soil tray though is that my medium has been staying super waterlogged, which is a little bit concerning. But the good news is, is our root system is still looking healthy and happy and we're not seeing any root rot. That and our water level is still wonderful from the initial 14 cups. As for our silicone tray, we are also having beautiful roots. See y'all soon for another update. Day 10. Today is day 12 of our Crack Key Hydroponics versus Soil Experiment, and today is gonna to be harvest day. But before we get into harvest, let's take a closer look at each of these trays. Taking a look at both tray groups, our germination was beautiful, as well as our microgreen growth. Now, something that I'm personally noticing right away on my hydroponic group is that my cotyledons are a lot bigger than they are over on my soil group. 
However, they both have coloration that looks pretty much identical. Even on the stems, we're seeing that beautiful purple on both trays. And at this point in the grow, eight days ago is whenever we added that initial 14 cups of water to each tray. Since then, I did have to add four more cups to both trays just a few days ago. That way I prevented them from drying out and we could get these all the way up to harvest day. Now let's take a look at the roots. On our hydroponic side, we have some beautiful roots. And over on our soil side, we're seeing the same thing. Our roots look extremely healthy and happy. And to be honest, at this current point from first glance, I am very happy with how my soil tray performed during this experiment. I honestly didn't expect this tray to make it all the way up to harvest day without any issues. Of course, I still don't know what's going on underneath this canopy until we can take a closer look at the grow medium. And during the beginning stages of this growth, something I did notice about my soil tray compared to my hydroponic tray was that our medium was staying super waterlogged, which can be quite concerning. However, once that water level in here got about halfway through that initial 14 cups, I noticed that my medium did stay a bit drier than it was before. Well, let's go ahead and get into harvesting. First, I want to harvest my soil tray. I love how beautiful the purple colors are in this variety of microgreens. Now, something that I am noticing about halfway through my tray is that in the middle, I'm finding quite a bit of moisture on my lower leaves here, which means they didn't really get enough room to dry out much. And it could have been from the medium holding a lot of water. From our soil tray, we got 286.1 grams. And from our hydroponic group, we got 319 grams. Technically, the point of this experiment wasn't to compare harvest weights. However, the hydroponic group did beat the soil group by 32.9 grams. The main point of this video was to even see if we could grow using soil and the crafty tray setup. And what I found out is yes, you can. However, there are just a few things that you do have to overcome, such as the medium staying too moist for too long, and making sure that center of the canopy dries out some. But overall, I'm really happy with how this tray performed and I'm honestly pretty surprised. I think that using the crack key tray setup would be beneficial with soil trays, especially if you wanna go on a short trip. I feel like if you're going to use soil and the crack key tray setup, you'd wanna do a few more experiments of your own. Depending on the type of soil that you're using, you could have more water retention than the one that I used. And with more water retention, there's more chance for things like over moisture, which can lead to fungus gnats and mold. Because the silicone reusable grow medium doesn't retain water the same as the soil, I just have less likelihood of the same situations happening that I'm concerned about with the soil. That's one of the things I love about the silicone reusable grow medium is it doesn't retain water in the same way. So the chances of the moisture being too high on this tray are really quite low. But either way though, I'm really happy to see that the soil tray did actually work in the crack key tray setup. And I think it's a really fun way to grow. I've been loving the crack key tray setup because I find it to be a really great passive way of growing my microgreens. Well, I've been loving the crack key tray setup because it's been a simple passive way for me to grow microgreens, especially when my schedule's been busy. Well, y'all, that is the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And let us know what you've been thinking of the crack key tray setup. Happy growing.